Good evening. It's time for the visit again. I uh, hope you enjoyed the opening shot, which was of ducks. Uh, that's not really the key word. Uh, the water is. The reason I was trying to share that with you is because it's my niece's husband, ex-husband, that painted that, and she's getting ready to take it back to Europe. So it was today or not at all. Um, in the last few weeks, I got a lot of calls on the water shows that, that we've done in recent weeks. Um, one was called H2 Wow, and one was called a journey of a water cluster, um, which was done bilingual in Korean and in English. And at which time we had a very special guest, um, Dr. Lorenzen, the, the gentleman that um, brought this wonderful water to us. Hello, how are you? And Hi. welcome to Olympia again. Yes, thank you very much. Great to be here. I heard she was in Anchorage and the friends up there watch you on a regular basis. So very good. Yeah, hello to our new friends. That's wonderful. Before we go on with um, the, the show that we have planned, I wanted to share something with the friends and with you. About 20 years ago, I was sent to a place called the New Life Foundation. That's because I was a little weird, you know, a little strange. <laughs> and uh, my symptoms and my illnesses didn't match. So uh, they didn't know what to do. So they sent me to Seattle to be analyzed uh, for thought forms and uh, frequency changes connected with volcanoes and earthquakes and things like that. And one of the paintings that I had painted was analyzed at that time. And then I'm gonna draw your attention first to um, the picture that we showed on the H2 show. It was of a water droplet, there was a thought form and the name of it was, I think it was uh, called, You Make Me Sick, mm -hmm. I Wanna Kill You. And I kept thinking I've seen this before, so lo and behold, when I realized where I had seen it before, this, um, I had painted this 20 years ago mm. as a thought form, and yes, in those days it was, you make me sick, you know, all the way. So I, we thought that was kind of different and share that with you. Well, Prophetic. That is fascinating. Mm -hmm. We also have crop circles that sort of uh, foreshadow some of the snowflakes that you have managed to put in a bottle. and. Um, so I'm going to give you the floor because one of the things we promised the friends is that you're going to tell us how you're going to get it in the bottle. Okay. So, if you please. Yeah, the, um, well, if you don't mind, I thought I'd start basically with how this was all created. Wonderful. We just recap that. Wonderful. And um, the, um, uh, I had been a researcher in pharmacology uh, years ago in, in a medical school in Southern California. And uh, my, my motivation at that point obviously was still what it is today is to try to help people develop new things that can improve health and longevity. And uh, uh, sometimes there's a, uh, uh, when we're faced with challenges in our life, it begins to help us refocus on new ways of, of thinking. And uh, the stimulus for this was the illness of my own wife, and she had uh, uh, very high uh, titers of uh, two different viruses called Epstein-Barr, mm -hmm. which is very common, yeah. also Coxsackie B virus, and she had fibromyalgia, arthritis, she was very ill, and we're trying to raise two little toddler boys uh -huh. with her illness, and uh, you can imagine the stress and strain of that, of that environment. And... Uh, Having uh, worked with some great uh, researchers, uh, I had access to uh, uh, many different types of pharmaceutical agents, even new experimental uh, uh, products as well, and nothing we tried would work for her. And she was essentially bedridden. She'd have mm -hmm. some days where she could get up and walk a little bit, but uh, she was uh, essentially an invalid. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was really motivated. and. Uh, there's a saying that uh, God whispers to us in our pleasure, but shouts to us in our pain. We just talked about that a little while ago, I think. So, um, uh, so I, I got the message that I should get reoriented. And 
having exhausted all the therapies that were available, my, my thought was, I'll take my wife to southern France, to Lourdes, mm -hmm. which is obviously well known as the healing spring. I had no idea the, the mode of action, why it worked, or even if it did work, mm -hmm. if it was placebo effect. I had no idea, but it was, you know, I'm searching for answers. And uh, I was working with some researchers in Japan at that time, and uh, we began to look at the geology of some of these mm -hmm. areas, like in France, uh, central Japan, India, and started to see some similarities as to why these springs may work the way they do. That, mm -hmm. uh, you know, previous researchers had gone there and they'd taken samples of these waters and said, well, there's nothing in the mineral content, there's nothing in the, bio in the bacteriological mm -hmm. content that would explain why these solutions work. Therefore, they all must be placebo. And, exactly. you know, uh, and uh, I wasn't really convinced of that because the data was so overwhelming. And uh, so I began to look at why uh, water can form into different for, uh, mm -hmm. structures and discovered that these healing springs, like in Lourdes or Kiromisu in Japan, were, were, um, were sites where these organized clusters did exist, but they only existed for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you drank it from the source, you had a physiological response to it. Mm -hmm. but if you try to put it in a bottle, take it with you, yeah. it wouldn't work. Now, there, recently there's been another healing spring discovered in central Mexico, in Teclote, mm -hmm. and they've discovered the same thing. The, uh, the people drink from the spring, and while they're there consuming that solution, they experience improve, improvements in their symptoms. But if they try to put it in a container and take it with them, it's gone. Well, certainly mineral content doesn't change mm -hmm. in just a few hours. Um, uh, bacteria of anything if, uh, is going to get worse. So, mm -hmm. uh, so those aren't, weren't the agents that were really the, 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 the active ingredient, so to speak, in these springs. So uh, what, what we found was that these clusters do actually exist. And uh, my wife was the first one to actually go on uh, one that we created in the laboratory, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a it was a, a real blessing that uh, she responded very quickly, and uh, that's uh, she's been on the solution now for over 14 years, mm -hmm. and uh, doing just fine. So, so um, that's that's really how this all mm -hmm. basically started. Well, I think Mother Nature was very wise that we can't take off with the with the water from Lourdes. And so it just gave us a new means how to, uh, how to attain all of that. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. yeah, so you asked the question, how do I get it in the bottle? That's right. Yeah, we, we uh, promised to tell them, how do you get it in the bottle? Yeah, the, uh, uh, well, fortunately, uh, after years of working with mm -hmm. the Japanese and fine-tuning the technology, um, I was awarded a, a U.S. patent in uh, January of uh, last year. Mm -hmm. And the second patent was just awarded in October 1999. This year, yeah, 1999. So, so we're um, uh, uh, so we, we now have established that the technology is reproducible, mm -hmm. and that's been very rewarding. Now, what we're trying to do is f find a way to take these clusters, these water organizations, mm -hmm. and give them some stability. So we um, we use a 14-step process in a mm -hmm. laboratory. It's a sterile environment. We have to follow the same manufacturing techniques as if it were an it's, injectable. Yeah, so exactly. there, there, there are very stringent uh, procedures that have mm -hmm. to be followed. Uh, and um, the the, uh, the first person who really inspired me to look at water clusters was um, a very famous researcher by the name of Albert Sinjorji. And Sinjorji had won the Nobel Prize yeah, exactly. for mm -hmm. his work with vitamin C. And he had written a book uh, theorizing that water structure in cell systems was critical to healing and, and maintenance. Mm -hmm. But he didn't, he couldn't uh, find a way to stabilize them. But, uh, but that was the inspiration for me. And that, that, th that work then uh, went on to, uh, uh, to work with researchers in Japan where we discovered some ceramic materials, uh, magnetic fields, lasers, pressure, temperature, other factors that could all be combined in a multi-step process so that 
the clusters that we were forming had long-term stability. They didn't last just 10 or 15 minutes as they do in nature. They would last uh, two years at room temperature. And uh, the, uh, the information that was programmed into these solutions could then be transferred by dilution into distilled water. Mm -hmm. Now, you see the timing here? A hundred years ago, we wouldn't have the technology to do that. Absolutely. So everything is always right on right on time. I'm, you know, maybe that's why we brought the clock here that I wanted to share with the friends, you know? Sure. And, and you got some gifts. They were clocks. Maybe that was symbolic, too. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, I think timing is time. everything. Mm -hmm. you know? and, yeah. uh, and, of course, um, at the time of my wife's illness, mm -hmm. I didn't really consider that much of a blessing because here she was, a beautiful lady, yeah. uh, a, a, in, in a lot of pain, uh, very dysfunctional, and uh, and nothing that we had at our, in our uh, armory oh. of of treatments uh, was effective, but but that was the impetus that we needed to take it to the next step and look at yeah. complementary ways of accelerating healing. Yeah, so we have to thank her. Yeah, absolutely. For, for being willing to go to that experience, That's right. you know, to That's right. so she could help us. Okay. Um, I interrupt people, and I probably did that again. Let's see. We were trying to get to the slideshow. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to show um, some photographs from um, uh, 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 from work that we've done in Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, we've actually been now distributing products in Japan for the last 13 years, mm -hmm. and have uh, 32 clinics. Uh, set throughout Japan where we're uh, treating individuals with these solutions and, and collecting data. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it's all right, I'd like to kind of review a little mm -hmm. bit about uh, how these structures can vary. Yeah, I don't mind at all. We're so happy that you came. Uh, you can just about do anything you want. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to look at some of the slides that um, Dr. Lorenzen is going to describe to us, and uh, we've seen some of these before, but it just might sound different coming from you. Good, thank yeah. you. So, let's see. Yeah, um, the, uh, this first slide is, is actually a collection of uh, different types of tap water uh, from London, Tokyo, Los Angeles. Uh, you can see there's really no, uh, no real structure. As a matter of fact, they look a lot like your painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, um, uh, what we've discovered is that these these water organizations, these rings or clusters that we're looking for in nature really can exist in an environment uh, where there's chlorine. So uh, chlorine is really one of the most disruptive to the, uh, the biological activity of water. So that's why obviously it's such a, a great disinfectant because nothing can really survive in that. Yeah, I have a little story. Um, when I first came to the United States, um, I used to put my clothes outside because it would bleach everything. Mm. And then I was told that they had they had chlorine, they had sunshine in a bottle, and I didn't quite buy into that. So <laughs> we probably agree on that too. <laughs> yes. The um, uh, the next um, next slide is a um, is a picture of different types of uh, spring waters, and. Uh, what was interesting is we uh, we had found that uh, various types of uh, springs uh, may have different cluster formations, different mm -hmm. cluster sizes. And if you look at the uh, upper left uh, photo, uh, you'll notice that the clusters in, in that photograph are much smaller than, let's say, the one directly below it or to the, or to the right of it. And uh, this is uh, essentially the this solution from um, from Lourdes. Now, if you go 12,000 miles away to another healing spring uh, in central Japan uh, near Kyoto, the, um, the, the there's a spring there by the name of Kiromisu, mm -hmm. and it's the ba and it's at the base of Mount Hiei in Japan, and um, uh, people stand in line for hours mm -hmm. to use this solution. Well. Uh, we noticed that um, here again, the, these clusters don't last very long. And for centuries, the Japanese had actually used bamboo cups that they would dip into the into the spring and drink, and then uh, give thanks. And uh, then they were uh, the health department got involved and said, "Well, we're concerned that yeah. that you're going to 
get bacteria by using the same cup. So exactly. they so they replaced the bamboo cups that they've used for centuries with aluminum cups. Not good, not good. And the aluminum, of course, would yeah. destroy uh, the, the water structure, and then their, their efficacy rates dropped mm -hmm. off. And so we uh, contacted them and said, uh, try using a, a UV sterilizer with bamboo so that you can still stay the bamboo and use the bamboo and not don't use the aluminum and mm -hmm. sure enough the, uh, the the physiological improvement came back so um, uh, so here on on separate separate areas of the world are solutions that are they're quite uh, quite uh, similar and we found the same thing with uh, that spring in Teclote, Mexico, with springs in Germany, mm -hmm. in um, in India. So uh, even though they're not uh, very common, uh, they are uh, they do exist. But the natural source of these is mm -hmm. very unstable. So what we patented was a way of making them stable, making them stable and more energetic, yes. right? So that's how we get it into the bottle. That's yeah, right. We we have really had we really had fun with that because. We ha spoke different languages, and nobody had an exact word for cluster, you know. Right. And, and so that's how that came about. Yeah. The uh, well, as a, even though this uh, may be considered a new technology to a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's been described for generations. Uh, if you look in um, John chapter five in the Bible, there's mm -hmm. a reference to the pools of Bethesda, and uh, the pools of Bethesda were famous for their healing properties. And if you um, if you read there, you'll it says that the patients would would wait around the pool, and they would wait for the stirrings of the water. Now, ah. wh now what that means to me is that um, there were periodic eruptions. Yeah, geyser type thing. Yeah, that's what I was visualizing as you uh, Because the, the patients knew that they, that when they mm -hmm. when the water was stirred, they would jump in, they would drink, mm -hmm. they would bathe, right. and so on. And after a few minutes, the effect was gone. Gone. They'd get out and yeah. they'd wait for the next stirring. Yeah. So here again, if there's magnetite, if there's quartz, mm -hmm. if there's high pressure, if it's a deep source, the chances are good that these um, uh, these water clusters are coming up from the earth and uh, will really hydrate cell systems very effectively. So uh, this is nothing new. Mm -hmm. It's been around for generations, but. Uh, we've been looking for the wrong thing. We've been exactly. looking at mineral content or radiation or other factors that might cause physiological change, and no mm -hmm. one considered that there might be uh, a structural component to water, mm -hmm. even though it, it may have even a sh very short life. Now, would this be a good time to ask a question? Um, uh, one of the things, uh, I went to one of your lectures, and one of the things that um, uh, we didn't quite get around to asking you is because of the component in the length. You mentioned that that like like the shelf life, what we consider shelf life. I'm not really sure if that's the right word, but once once we have it in in the form that you you know that you've uh, created it in, and then you said and eventually, does that lose the shelf life too? Well, no. The um, uh, it will it will tend to diminish a little bit in mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, in its energy pattern. But the solutions that we've created um, uh, we know are stable for a minimum of two years. Ah, so it's so it's it's the frequency that changes. That's right. Okay. And, that, that and, well, actually, it's the intensity. Oh, the intensity. No, the, the the frequency is fairly constant uh, based on the different solutions mm -hmm. we make because what we do is we're using this uh, this solution with a lower surface tension mm -hmm. as a delivery system, mm -hmm. and then we add to that solution other ingredients, uh, mm -hmm. herbal extracts, mi uh, microorganisms, depending on what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then, as a nutraceutical, mm -hmm. you know, as a therapeutic food, we can then uh, target the needs that people have, but but uh, not use harsh chemicals mm -hmm. or or medications, we can do it in a very natural way. I, I'm sure that's going to answer that question. So thank you for interrupted. We can get back oh, to it. Oh no. Him. So uh, anyway, continuing on with the uh, the, the next slides. Uh, what well, we've we've worked with a number of uh, beautiful researchers um, all over the world, and one uh, doctor I have a great deal of respect for is a, um, a Dr. Seiji Katayama, 
and uh, Dr. Katayama uh, looked at the structure of water basically uh, in, in different tissues as a function of age. And uh, as a matter of fact, that's the, that was basically uh, uh, the, the title of his paper was Biowater or Cluster Water mm -hmm. Structure uh, and, and Aging Mechanisms. And uh, what Katayama showed was um, uh, when we are very young, let's say a, a young child, three, four years of age, if you look at the water clusters in uh, the bloodstream, the, uh, the, the content is extremely high. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we age, those water cluster uh, uh, quantities drop off mm -hmm. substantially. So by the time we reach the age of 36, for example, we've lost about 60% of, uh, of those water organizations. So the... Uh, uh, so the uh, uh, so what we're trying to do now is find ways of uh, of not only helping the cell systems maintain these water structures for longer periods of time, but uh, the, our second focus is especially oriented to uh, uh, the elderly, the geriatric members of our of our oh, society. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, because um, uh, the people uh, as we age become dehydrated. Yeah. And what Katayama showed is not only do we dehydrate, but the chemistry of the water actually changes itself. So, uh, uh, so what we're doing now is uh, is using this technology to um, to help individuals um, not only improve their their cell water turnover rate, uh, but also replenish those systems with water organizations that are going to be uh, uh, help improve cellular efficiency. Mm -hmm. At the same time, now there's a there's a researcher by name of um, uh, uh, Dr. Franco Bistolfi, and Professor Pistol Bistolfi is um, a radiologist and uh, at the uh, Galleria Hospital in Genoa, Italy, and he uh, wrote a book called Radiation Order Disorder. Now we know that there's a lot of things ah. in our environment that that uh, cause damage, x-rays, exactly. you know, mm -hmm. uh, gamma radiation, there's, uh, 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 there's uh, obviously background radiation from, uh, mm -hmm. from space. Uh, these, this ionizing radiation leads to destruction and disorder of cell systems. And uh, what Professor Pistolfi uh, found and wrote to me and uh, said that these solutions we were creating are actually uh, helping to induce order into proteins, and um, and and really we're we're basically we're a function of how well organized our cell systems are. If yeah. they're the the more dysfunctional, uh, the more disordered disordered they are, uh, the less effective they're actually going to be. Mm -hmm. So 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 in essence, if uh, like myself, um, we we didn't discuss it before. I had a little run in with some radiation here in in different areas. So actually, that would kind of get me over the hump, so to speak, by replenishing my salts. Is that what you're saying? Well, the, well basically, what um, what we've shown in in our research is mm -hmm. that um, uh, the older the individual, usually the more dysfunctional they become, mm -hmm. and. Uh, as we know, you know, health maintenance costs are uh, are, are skyrocketing, and that uh, we, about 90% of the money we spend to maintain our health is spent really in the last six months of our life, mm -hmm. because um, uh, because we're, the cell systems are becoming less efficient. And you can see, based on this graph by Dr. Katayama, if you look at the um, uh, upper left, you'll see. Uh, proton density and uh, l a count of about 4,000. Well, that's that's the water cluster content in blood uh, in a four-year-old child. And here you can see as we age, as we get uh, to age 36 and beyond, uh, all these uh, all these water cluster contents drop off precipitously. And that's not only in uh, in blood, but also bone and muscle tissue and so on. And uh, if we can go to the next slide, um, I want to uh, uh, show a little bit of comparison of how Dr. Katayama mm -hmm. split this uh, this information into three separate categories. 
Now, um, uh, Here we are. what Dr. Katayama showed and uh, was that the um, uh, that as we get older, the uh, the water goes from being very active, very mobile, to being very sluggish. And uh, uh, he showed in his in his research that um, the diffusion, the movement of the water in a four-year-old child, is very very rapid. Uh, some researchers have told me that um, they've measured turnover rates in very young healthy tissues and that we may be flushing and moving the water in a cell system every 17 minutes. Wow. Now, and, and someone wow. with edema, yeah. someone with congestive heart failure, someone with a chronic illness, that may be a turnover of several weeks. Yeah. And uh, so uh, he's, he broke into three categories. Uh, on the left side, you can see the physiological function. Next to that, the uh, the water activity in a young child. Uh, to the right of that, water activity in a middle-aged individual, and on the far right, water activity in uh, a, a, an older individual. And they showed that uh, that the water activity is very active, very mobile. Um, uh, it moves very quickly and it turns over quickly. But as we get older, that water tends to become very sluggish and it doesn't move mm -hmm. well and uh, we can take our vitamins and our minerals and herbs and other things to help our health but if we uh, if we aren't adequately hydrated if we're not helping to transport those nutrients mm -hmm. through into cell membranes and we're not uh, able to remove cell waste at the mm -hmm. same time uh, this is going to lead to ultimately to cell damage and to cell dysfunction. Now, in, in one of the, in the, in the previous show, we talked about the fact that even if you take vitamins and sometimes the body is so dehydrated it doesn't absorb them and they just pass right through them. They, if in our paper here where they found um, uh, leftover uh, vitamins in pot, uh, pot parties. Oh, yeah. And they could even read what it, what it said, and I thought it was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, um, uh, and this is what we...